Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with episode 30 something of my live play on the 30 little snap tables. I'm not quite sure what the number is, maybe 34, not really sure, not really care, it's not a big issue. Um, and yeah, we're just going to be playing some 30 little snap, having some fun with it, um, talking about um, talking about how to enjoy poker. Um, get the impression these days that just a bunch of players just don't enjoy poker that much anymore. Like players who uh, they're not even like professional players. They're just um, the recreational players who hang on. We just read with a flush, which is pretty sweet. I'll get back to what I was talking about in a moment. I'm going to bet smallish just to try and make sure we get the call. I'm not raising my full house against a cold finger. I guess we're just going to chop this most of the time. Sorry for my really awful fucking singing there, by the way. Um, it's not to be clever about. Uh, do we just shove here? I don't think so. We're just going to try and get caught by a three. And we got caught by something. Unfortunately, my finding out what people have isn't working at the moment on Triple Eight since they updated. For some reason, it just doesn't work. So, whatever. Fuck it, I guess. So yeah, um, as some of you might know, some of you might not know, I do a little bit of. I don't call it coaching anymore. Um, mentoring, shall we say? I help some recreational players improve their overall poker experience. Um, I'm just going to call here with the Ace King. We played it softly enough where I think we can, I mean, I think we're going to lose here a lot of the time. He's just going to have a 10 or something. Um, but he, he could definitely be bluffing too. And he was. Go was. Um, yeah, um, I wouldn't say that I offer tons and tons of like technical help to poker players and um, I could certainly offer technical help to to players that are beginners or long-term losing players well I think when I do a lot of my best work is talking to players um, about the other parts of poker about the, the, the dealing with the tough spells still enjoying it and um, that's what I want to talk about today about about um, making poker still or keeping poker fun and not allowing it to become some real chore almost because this is what happens with like a bunch of recreational players they find poker and they play just for fun and they lose and they don't really give a fuck that they lose they don't really care very much because it's fun it's their hobby it's what they want to do then they find poker forums they understand that wow this is something if i got quite good at it i could actually make some money from and for lots and lots of players that completely sucks all of the fun out of it and they end up actually turning poker into some really shit, badly paid job where they just generate a load of rake, don't make an awful lot of money, and then um, they end up just fucking hating the game, hating themselves, and it stops being exactly what it was for them when they started. And then I kind of think it's possible to still, to still have both. It's possible to still really enjoy poker as a hobby and make money at it. I know it's possible because that's what I do. Sure, I play 30 and L and sometimes 50 and L. I've kind of played much more 30 and L in the last six months than 50 and L just because it's my real proper full on comfort zone where I just know that I'm a very consistent winner without being conceited, big headed, call it what you will. There won't be any regulars in these games that, that I'm concerned about that are better than me. There might be some that actually are a little bit better than me but um, there's just so very few of them. I just have a big, big edge in these games and I'm happy to push that big edge. Um, not make as much money as I quote-unquote could make if I pushed myself and played higher. But at the same time, um, I make as much money as I need to make and I enjoy it. So it just allows me to just to just put time in when I want to put time in. And if I don't want to put a lot of time in because I've got other things to do, I, w I won't do it. Um, and like to end the wibble a little bit because where I was wibbling a little bit there there's just a bunch of players and I've got quite a lot in my study group um, and in my Facebook group 
and they've forgotten how to enjoy poker they really have um, it's just become like one really mad grind for them now where they're not pushing a particularly big win rate but they, they've been poisoned by by things you've read on the internet about oh you have to do this you have to do that you have to like study for 25% of your time when people don't really know what they want to be studying so they just like watch a few videos like this one or videos on training sites and things and then um, you know they're not getting that much from it and you you know all the things are told they can't they can and can't do um stuff like we can't like call with suited connectors on the button well why the fuck can't we if that's what you want to do and you can make it pay so what if it's not a huge winning play so what if you if you can't balance it that well um who actually gives a shit you know are you enjoying it is it you know, a winning play for you long term yes and yes so therefore just go ahead and do some of these things i'm sick of reading on forums you can't do this you can't do that you must do this you must do that it just turns micro stakes poker into a real fucking tedious job for a lot of people they stop loving it and they either get driven away from it or they become really embittered bad regulars um and i try and encourage people not to become that person we're just going to keep calling here because this NTL just does weird stuff. And he just had the three king. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not already tagged because he's definitely a weirder. So yeah, my, um, the message is don't take poker too seriously. Of course take it seriously. Try to improve. Try to like monetize your hobby. But not to the extent where you're sacrificing your enjoyment of the game because you you will have no longevity if you stop enjoying the game there will become a point where you just get sick of it and you'll just do something else and that's it that it's gone from you then and you need to you really really need to be enjoying it there's so many people on on forums in skype groups and they're just incredibly bitter and the games it's really poisoned them it really has and um it's a shame because I mean there's some guys I've been talking to just before I started making this video, one guy in particular, I don't need to name him. Um and we're gonna continue playing our ace queen first. We'll get back to talking about him in a moment. We're just gonna bet really big here and shove the turn. And no we're not because he folds. Um and he's just he's a good player. He genuinely is a good player, but he just so absolutely desperate to succeed. Um you know, he's burning himself out in a way that he just shouldn't be. I mean, he's going to keep checking out 5 6 here. We don't have very much showdown value, but um, whatever. I just don't think he's going to fold an ace. I don't think he's going to fold like, some kind of pocket pair with a club. I've not played this hand very well because I've been talking, but whatever. It's a small pot. Who cares? And we win anyway, so good for us. So, yeah, it's just kind of. He's really stopped. He stopped enjoying it, he stopped loving it, and um, just poker is that one incessant grind for him. Every time I talk to him, you can just feel he's, he's pissed off with it all, he's pissed off with himself. Um, and it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't be that way. For most of us as recreational players, hobbyists, call us what you will, um, poker should ultimately be about a hobby, and if we can just like even if we just break even and it's like just stop being like a net depositor that's something that, you know that's that's progress for lots and lots and lots of us um if you want to be higher than that if you want to do better than that you can still do much better than that without you know like drilling yourself into the ground like like you like a lot of the advice you get and that might sound weird coming from someone who um that professes to be a poker coach or a poker mentor or whatever um we're just going to fold the ace queen because it's completely big for us but it's just true it's it's a sort of thing it's it's never it's rarely talked about how often do you hear or read about people burning out in the forums if you suggest to people they're perhaps burning out the plane too much they almost resent it because it's just drilled into us now pretty much all the time you know you must grind hard you must do this you must do that and then um, yeah it's turned to what was a fun hobby for a lot of people into something else, something very ugly. And um, I'm about changing that, at least for the people that I come in contact with. 
I must say it's okay to be a recreational player. It's okay to study just one hour a week and, and just play most of the time and learn my experiences. Hello there, so there's someone who can't really type because the microphone's all over me fucking thing. I must still say hi though, and then we'll squeeze him. Lynch is a very good regular, definitely one of the better regulars. Um, I could well get four better here than I think I'm probably going to fold. Right, I was sorry I couldn't speak to you more there, Mr. Wright. If you watch the videos, um, do apologise, but I've got a new microphone and it's splayed right over my keyboard right now because I don't need to use my keyboard. So yeah, I'm here, I did a podcast about it a while ago, so it's okay to be a recreational player, and it's a message I'm going to keep getting out to people, because I think it is, it's absolutely okay to be a recreational player, it's absolutely okay to not drill yourself into the ground with studying and and all those things, of course you want to study poker, I'm not for a second saying we don't want to study, I'm not going to give my critics like that way into me. Um, but you don't have to, like, if, you're, if you've got 10 hours a week to play poker because you're a recreational player, you don't have to like study for fucking two hours of that 10. Just play and just always watch some videos in your, when you've got some spare time. I don't know, when you go, when you go and like, instead of having a shower, go and have a soak in the bath, watch a video for 45 minutes. Um, fit your study in, in a more recreational manner. Don't sacrifice your playing time to do too much studying. Um, I don't know, read a book on your way to work, read a book on your breaks at work. Um, you know, if you like to go to the loo and read a book, read a, read a book on the loo for 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, that we can find time outside of our grinding schedule to, um, to, to work on improving our game without becoming obsessive about it. I mean, if you want to become a real, like, mega crusher long term, this isn't good advice for you. I wouldn't for a second say it's good advice. I'm talking specifically to um, recreational players here, hobbyists, people who, who enjoy playing poker, want to en continue enjoy playing poker, but hopefully monetize it or at least stop themselves becoming a net depositor. They're the people I'm talking to. If, you're, if you have ambitions of being a 200 nil sick or 400 on mid stakes, whatever it is, um, turn the video off now because you're just going to get increasingly incensed by some of the things that I'm saying. But if you are a hobbyist or recreational player, just keep listening, because um, we're just going to have fun with it. You're going to see things you don't see in other videos. You're going to see me calling with some hands that you would typically see people saying, oh, you need to three bet or fold that, or you can't balance that, so don't do it. You're going to see some of that stuff. Um, some of the stuff that you'd like to do in your games. And I'm saying it's it's fine to do that. It's fine if you want to call a and under the gun open with fire force suited on the button. It's absolutely fine to do that, as long as you've got some idea of how you're sometimes going to make it win post-flop. Not all the time, most of the time you're just going to be folding it when someone C bets. But I'm saying have fun with it. Don't get stuck into, oh, you need to play these ranges. And I mean, I've seen so many range charts and hand charts and do C bet this, don't C bet that, you know, balance your range here, don't balance your range there. and. Um, it's all really good advice, I would imagine, if you want to be really, really good at poker and kind of stop enjoying it. It's not that good advice if you want to try and play just 10 hours a week when the kids are in bed, with unwinding with a glass of wine or a beer or a whiskey or a coffee or whatever. We just want to sit down and you just want to play some poker. Um, as you can see, I've been playing really casually so far. We've already racked up like $20 a profit. Now, that's not always going to happen. Of course it isn't. Um, but... I just don't get stressed when I play. You know, people make poker a much more stressful grind than it needs to be. And um, I blame a lot of the bad regulars posting on forums for it. You know, the guys who are, aren't even winning themselves, but they're, they're following some blueprint from some forum, but they've been watching some guy play much higher stakes than they are. And they're trying to follow his blueprint for success at high stakes and apply them to low stakes, to micro stakes. Um, that's something that doesn't really work anyway. And if you're not really understanding why they're doing it and why that's working in their games and why it's not working in your games, it can actually lead to you making far more mistakes um, than you were making before you watched the videos. 
and those, those guys are really good. They make some excellent videos. I'm not for one second saying they make bad videos. What I am saying is if you're a losing microstakes player watching I don't know. I don't even know who like, the really like, super coaches are these on Run It Once, but watching some like really good coach on Run It Once playing 400 nil, that's not going to help you with your microstates game. Well, it is. It's going to... It's a silly thing to say that and take that back. It's going to help you with it. In terms of you're going to start to understand why good players do certain things more often. But if you then try and apply some of those things in your games and you either misapply them or... Um, they're just not really applicable strategies for your games. You're going to end up getting really quite confused and you're going to post hands on forums, you're going to get trolled, you're going to get criticised. And again, it's just going to ruin your enjoyment of the game. So let's just work on taking poker less seriously while still taking it seriously, if that makes sense. Hopefully we're going to get to get it in here against Preet... Pre-trial, whatever the heck it's called. Well, we flop a set, which is always nice. I'm just going to check here, because I think when we get players like this, like pre-trial, he's probably not going to be a good player given his stack size. They just bet way, way, way too often when they check to. Um, lots of regulars don't, but you're fine with lots of weaker players. I mean, they're not all of them, but lots of players will bet way too often versus missed C bets and you can induce some bluffs. I mean yeah we've missed a bit of value here now. But we I don't know. Maybe I could have bet the turn there. But I just don't think he's got anything very often. And he did manage to pay so I'm possibly, very possibly missed a few dollars of value there. Um but whatever. Just whatever, I go with my read on a, on a situation, and that's like I've tried. I've only got th like six dollars to get to a three dollar pot. I summarily failed to do that, and I brought one of my own cardinal rules of you know missing value. I feel like I may have missed value there, but who knows? Maybe I gained value because maybe he just that like, paired his seven on the river and wouldn't have called any other bets before then. But yeah, that isn't typically something I'd advice doing all the time against people with deeper stacks we need to start building a pot but against these like sh people who like sh these short stacks they will often go after them they will often just like auto bet versus miss c bets so i gave him two chances to do that i mean when we filled up on the turn maybe i could have i should have probably bet 150 so i could just shove the river but whatever it's not the end of the world It would be a much bigger mistake there if I'd failed to get two streets of value and set up a pot against somebody with a big stack when I've got a full house. Not as much of an issue when he's only got six dollars. Woohoo! We have flopped a draw. A nice one at that. I mean, we're obviously going nowhere here. That is a flop that I like and don't like. Against people's like a cold calling of a three bet range and someone's calling a three bet out of position, we have top pair top kicker. But um, I will not be betting this flop because we just can't handle a check raise. So I'm going to be absolutely be checking back here because I'm not in love with the spot right now. Um, but yeah, we can possibly get some value, but value from what exactly? Some draws maybe. Um, worst kings. What do they really have? King Jack behind the stuff like queen 10 ace queen might call it's like we've got a three street hand right now i'm just gonna check back seven of clubs is quite a good card for us for obvious reasons we pick up the flush draw if we are behind um and we can probably if it checks again we can probably make a small bet on this turn for value and i am absolutely bet folding here um if i get i just don't see it as a spot where someone's going to raise me with a worse hand than ace king we're betting for value now. And when we do get called by Queen 10, King 10, King Queen, those types of things, we have some equity with our club. Turns out we just won the pot, so happy days. We have a very cute kitten.
Oh, she's not even a kitten anymore. She's two, which is proper irritating. Right? Now, she's like a dog. She brings straws to me and basically encourages me to throw them, for her, which I'm happy to do um, when I'm not making a video. But we have a hard floor in here, and when she chases it, she makes a real racket, scratching all over it. So, um, I'm sorry, Mittens, but right now, I'm not prepared to play catch, play fetch with you. Okay, love, play with you soon. She'll be gone in a minute. She'll be not asked about me soon. She'll be like, you know, fat bastards not interested in me tonight. And she'll just go and cuddle up somewhere. We're just going to fold this king queen off. It's a dreadful flop for us. You'll notice I had three X on the bottom as well. I haven't been three bet once yet in 20 minutes. I mean, I get three bet sometimes, of course I do. But I think there's way more value in three xing from the button in these games and min raising two xing. I see these people in these snap games that like just min raise under the gun um, with all of the range and they're just like, what the fuck are you doing? There's just so many calling stations in these games. Why on earth would you want to miss value by just min raising? But rather make it 67 or they'll just click the half pot and make it 67. Um, yeah, it's not something you'll ever catch me doing. People just call way too much in these games and don't three bet enough to make me think that something less than two x is better than than three x. We're just gonna keep checking here. We might have the best hand. No, oh, we probably do still have the best hand, but it's gonna be hard to get value. We don't really want to see a four spade come off. That turn card is horrendous. I'm um, now in check four mode, I think. We could bet again, but I think he's just going to call all the time and then we just get check fold in a bigger pot on the river. So we're just going to check. If he bets really small, I'll call it 150 or $2 or something. I just think he's a really awful card for us. He just bombers it. Whatever. Bye bye, aces. I'm just going to play my instincts there. As soon as that turn card is like, shit, that turn card sucks. Um, yeah, he might have, he might well have just like, not turned a better handed double. They might like, value bet his pair there. Like pair of jacks or something. And they made me fold aces. But what, it's just one of those spots where I'm not comfortable with that pot getting that much bigger. And uh, you, you will get a lot of people that would just check back there with like Jack X and stuff. So I think I probably did for, like fold the worst time then. If I didn't, uh, big deal. It's not something I'm going to beat myself up over. You know, sometimes we fold the best time when we play poker. Um, if you're not folding the best time some of the time, you're calling too often. And conversely, if when you're value betting, if you're not value owning yourself sometimes, you're not value betting enough. I mean, I sometimes almost certainly fold the best hand and I often own myself from my value betting so overall I think I'm doing just about fine with it do I make mistakes of course I do every player in the world makes mistakes I'm not that proud of the fact I make mistakes of course and I'm trying to say that we should strive to make as few mistakes as possible um but I don't beat myself up over them I just make a read of the situation like I don't have this situation anymore so I'm just not going to put any more money in if that sometimes leads to me in the best time well so be it sometimes I'll like a situation more than I should and I'll value bet too thin and I'll lose money that way but overall I mean I feel versus the pool I'm playing in I make way less mistakes than than um, my peers so that's good enough for me so we need to be doing put ourselves in pools where we make less mistakes than our peers and just wait for the money to stack up basically this NTL is definitely a strange player. Oh, Grant's called us in the big blind. I'm just going to bet it because NTL, because he's a strange, strange player. Grant raises me, I'm going to get a little bit sad, but he didn't. Yeah, so most of my videos from my YouTube channel going forward are definitely going to be of the more relaxed variety, shall we say. They're not going to be anywhere near as intense as 
because um, many 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 videos there they're going to be kind of like hopefully showing me playing a solid brand of poker talking about the spots that are interesting when they come up but also with, with kind of um, with a more laid back approach this how she likes a big fish she's probably got a really strong hand here which makes me want to try and crack it if it was in position I would call here against that which like because we're out of position we're just gonna fold and then um, feel a little bit sad that we don't get to take a flop with a really bad player we need to flop two pairs we are going to start by raising and we're not planning on folding at this point and we don't need to fold anyway Convict, never heard of you sir where are you from United Kingdom. Well, Lucha assumption is you're not going to be good. You might be. I mean, Colby could be a good regular. I've never heard of. He could be a new player to the site, but my default assumption with UK players, and that's with me being a UK citizen, is that they're more likely to be bad than good when they're playing in these games. And maybe if we get higher stakes, maybe that's not as true. With the micro stakes, if I see a UK player, my default assumption is bad until they prove otherwise. So if you have got this far in the video and you are a losing, break even, hobbyist, call yourself however you want to describe yourself, recreational player, um, and you would like to think about having a chat with me, just doing some work with me, um, be it some technical aspects of your game, if you think that I could help you with that, or just with your mental game, or just with your overall approach to poker, and you think you'd like to have a, a session with me, just chatting about stuff or whatever, it can be whatever you want it to be. My contact details are beneath the video, they're pretty much splashed all over the video, well not splashed but a couple of pop-ups will pop up here and there. There's plenty of ways to get in touch with me, Skype, my website, my email, it's all there. If you visit my website there's a plethora of ways to get in touch with me and please do. I mean I think for $25 for one session or if we talk about um, the three sessions for 60 that's $20 per hour. Um, I think it's hard to go far wrong I, I don't think anyone ever leaves a session with me thinking well for what I've just paid there I've got nothing from it you know I, I do give value for money that's for sure am I as good a coach as some of the guys charging 40 50 dollars an hour of course not um, but you get what you pay for so there we are gonna oval in I don't think squeezing is cheese very much because I think I'm just gonna get called in two spots so this guy's donking into us on this board texture we don't have very much he can just take it it's if he's donking a draw he's not folding if you're donking a made hand it's probably not folding and backdoor straight backdoor flush one over card too many people to get through So we flop it a flush draw. Maybe we could check here. We think about check calling, check raising. We've got a good shot here, he's gonna fold this. I think we will start by checking here actually. And he absolutely turbo checks back. Which suggests he's probably not that strong. And that's just now it's a question of is our ace high good? I think we're going to continue checking. I don't see that much reason to bet against somebody who snap checks back the flop. He just pots the turn. This doesn't make much sense. And usually when things don't make sense to me, I usually click the call button. And yeah, he just snap checks back the river. I mean, it's a shame we can't see what he had there. Um, because this stupid button just doesn't work but um yeah i'll certainly look afterwards and try and somehow get an out of him yeah but that's one thing i, I do more often than not if something doesn't make sense to me 
like, like if it could, if I couldn't, like it was someone takes a line, I'm like, I really don't know what they'd do this with for value. Once I can't really start thinking about what would someone check back a flop with, and then just pop the turn when the board doesn't change for value. And if I can't really put too many hands in someone's value range, I'd usually just call them a bluff catchers. It's far from an exact science, of course, but it's just fine. Scuzzlad is pretty damn spewy three bets so my plan here is to call with the specific intention of back raising over Scuzzlad. I think he's he definitely squeezes a disproportionate amount and he just didn't he obviously had the turbo fold on but whatever um, I caught him twice last night calling my four bets out of position with 8-9 suited I won both pots it was pretty nice he definitely gets out of line I don't know much about ease jazz. Isn't Poland though, so he's probably not gonna suck. When he checks back that board, I'm gonna put him on a range of like under pairs to the eights. Um and worse ace highs than me. No reason to, to bluff me, you know, we're doing okay against his range for checking back there. And we're just gonna keep checking and he might just literally just give up here with a hand like King Jack or Ten Jack or something. We're probably gonna call him if we met. And I would expect to see enough King High, Jack High, Ten High, that type of stuff. And a counterfeited pair of ducks, whatever, you know, just the kind of he's not gonna have a strong enough hand enough at the time there where I think I should do anything but call. Again, it's just his entire line. He didn't rep any strength and he just decides to bet the river. Yeah, sometimes he might just be betting A side to try and make me fold a chop. But the pot's so small, it's not an issue. And he's going to be bluffing enough where I can call expecting to do better than chopping enough of the time to make that fine. I'm really not a mass guy, but that just made sense to me there that just check calling was going to be, it's going to show me profit long term. This might be the longest I've ever gone in a video where I haven't been 3-bet. 32 minutes playing, which is probably what, at this rate, I would say 160 hands. And we haven't been 3-bet once. And I don't think I've been that like, excessively tight with my opening ranges, so that's nice. We'll not be C-betting this board into two players. We're just going to check and take our free card. Hit Queen. I'm not super excited by that. We're not going to call if Wilfred bets. We're going to kind of check back again here and hope another club doesn't come on the river. Which it did. And now it's do we try and turn our queen into a bluffy to get somebody off? I might like pocket two to the club or something. I think if someone had the jack of clubs, he would have bet. So I'm going to bet here with the intention of trying to get somebody to fold a six high flush or lower. I expect people to call with a ten of clubs, nine of clubs, that type of thing. But, um, I'm going to assume we were bluffing there, and I'm going to be quite pleased that it worked. And if we were, well, whatever. It's a red line win, so it's all good. Two eights. We're going to set mine against Rexus. We haven't flopped a set yet this video, I don't think so. That seems like as good a time as any. Don't squeeze Stefter. Don't just jam your stack in. That'd be horrible. Oh, you may as well come along with two high V pip. Oh, and the squeeze came, and now we just have to beg her off out of the way. Horrible flop to sea bet, not that interested in sea betting it. I will make a sea bet on the turn if Faddy checks again. And this is the one and only, because he could still be like just checking out like ace deuce or something here. So I'm just going to bet once on the turn if it doesn't work. I'm done, we get check min raised. 
Um, I never fold to min raises, but I do when I've got 10 4 off suit. And we just fold because obviously King 10 high is garbage. And good for him. He managed to set his trap and he finally managed to spring it. So I'm pleased for him. He's probably enjoyed himself there. Probably shouldn't have opened that in there suited given we've got Scuzzlad in the big blind, but yeah there comes the three bit and there's nothing much we can do with the eight nine suited if i'd realized that was a bit of bad autopilot if i looked at the blinds there um i would not have opened that against squad lad not from middle position well i wouldn't have opened it from any position because squad lad's just he's just a moron he three bets way too much he probably thinks he's doing something good he isn't he's just being a muppet but whatever wow would you look at that for a squeeze size faddy 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 what are you doing Let's just see if anyone gets involved. No, they don't. Yes, it's always good if you're watching the video, but you just don't get it in these games. You just don't get it. If you think that the way to beat these games is having like a super aggro pre flop fucking three bet strategy, you're just getting it wrong, I'm afraid, sir. The way to beat these games is see flops with bad players and extract value. It's unquestionably the best way to play these games. But if you don't get it, then good for you. I'm going to call this against Faddy. Don't know anything about Fish Face 61. But Faddy's just squeezed a $10.50 pre flop, so he's probably got plenty of mistakes in him. We get squeezed, it's just a bit unfortunate. But I want to play pots against people. Look at this, I've complained about, I've not complained, mentioned not getting 3 bet, and then I'm getting 3 bet all over the place. And yeah, I want to play pots against people like Faddy who just make it 10 50 pre flop. Because they're just going to make a bunch of mistakes. If this flop had one diamond, if a five was a diamond, I would almost certainly peel. But it isn't, so I'm not going to. Max D's, um, grinder school members, pretty solid player. Um, with him isolating someone with a short stack, and with a short stack calling behind, we're just going to let the ace chat go. Guinness kicks another pretty aggro play, but I think tens is something we can like, open and then just fall back, call it off with blind versus blind against most regulars. Grant opens. This would typically be a good squeeze spot if I suspected Mask Carver was a fish. We have Grant who, you know, he opens wide enough for middle position that we can squeeze him, um, but I don't know anything about Mask Carver. So we just let the ACs go. I could have called, I guess. I could have, if, if I knew Mascara was a fish, I wouldn't have folded the A6. I would have found some way of playing it. But um, I know Grant's not going to stack off against me. Like There's not much value in Grant. Not versus me, anyway. I mean, Grant's capable of sometimes playing suboptimally, but I don't think he does versus me. I think he tries very hard against me, which he should do. And um, yeah, I just don't think there's value there in, in continuing. And on top of that, you know, he's a mate, and I don't really go out of my way to to make life difficult for my mates. I'm not going to see but our three here. I'm being had more chips, I would absolutely call with the 97, but he doesn't, so we're not gonna. Just gonna keep checking against Wilfred and hope he doesn't like just randomly spike some eight on the river. I think we just have the best hand here a lot of the time. Yeah. He just didn't bother bluffing. You see that a lot in these games. You think you need to bet to bluff people off showdown value and then they just don't have showdown value like as you can see there. And if they do have showdown value, they usually don't fold it, so I do not loads of checking back, but spots like that, I'm just happy to go check, 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 check. I think it's too thin for value and we don't need to bluff, so where would you want to bet? We won't be folding the queen down here to a single raise. Especially not a raise of that size. And we... We have back doors with the king of spades. He checks back immediately. Um, we're just going to go ahead and try and pick this pot. And we're going to bet twice. He might call with a good shot or something here. And then just fold the river. 
me core pretty damn quickly. It's not going to dissuade me from trying to bluff again though. Um, if he has a king that he's just checked back, well, hallelujah, good for him. If he doesn't have a king, he's going to have a hard time calling. Unless he's got some weird two pair or he's somehow made a straight on the, river, on the turn or something. And like I say, if he's checked back a king on the flop. And um, yeah, more power to him. Oh, good shot back door, flush draw. And um, that's going to keep me interested for a street. Wow, that's a big bet. That is a big bet. Hmm. I'm not folding. In position, I would just call. I wouldn't think twice about it. It wouldn't even be an issue. We're being out of position, we're just going to like, call and break the turn just so often and then be forced to fold. So I think we're going to we're going to make an attempt at a check raise. And if we three bets us, we got the easiest fold in the history of the world. The bet size does worry me slightly. That he just might not be in a bet folding type of mood with that size, but he did fold. So hallelujah. That was nice. Not really sure what my image is in these games these days. I know what it used to be like. Um, because that was a real nit. But since I've come back to these games from Sky, my VP and PFR are significantly different to... Um, Wow, what have we started here? A significantly different to where they were. So uh, some regulars will definitely have different opinions on me. We're going to just fold and watch here to see what Ivy picked three bears with. Pocket tens versus pocket aces. We definitely dodged some bullets there, baby. Obviously we're going to want Faddy to come along here. Hopefully he's not going to come along for making it £10.50, $10.50. I think I'm actually going to call this against Faddy because he, I just think he's way out of line. Um, even more so now that kick has called too. He just adds a little bit of extra value. I just think he's, he's probably going to be out of line. He's been pretty aggro a lot of the time we've seen him. It's not nice. It's a queen 10 suit in that position. It kind of sucks a little bit, but... Yeah, we're still gonna we're gonna take a shot. And if I'd have made some kind of pair here, I'd have just been of the mind to just not fold to Faddy. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't make a pair. And Faddy's probably just gonna pot it. Would be my guess. Uh, I'd look at that. He does just pot it, and we have to fold. But yeah, Faddy's someone I'm definitely gonna be prepared to gamble with. I don't like calling Queen Ten suited out of position. Of course not. And. Uh, most players I would just fold that hand but not to someone who is showing some spewy type tendencies yeah but we're approaching the 45 minute mark of the video though so um, we're going to call it a day now we're going to just play around to our blinds which is something you should always do to end your session unless you're absolutely tilting your tits off and then just snap quick that's my advice just literally close the client wow we've been three but again um like versus this size in blind versus blind we just can't fold and uh, we completely break now we're gonna just check fold come on right tower whatever you're called nope no dice with the two aces but it looks like we made twenty dollars during the session so Maybe slightly less with a bit of auto top at the start. It's been a good session. I've certainly enjoyed making the video. I've enjoyed expressing some of my thoughts that aren't necessarily about the technical side of the game. And I hope some of you guys have got something from it. And the forums are great. It can be a source of some good advice for you, but don't allow them to turn into something that you don't want to be. Um, with that we'll leave that last thought ringing through your minds and um yeah i hope you enjoyed it if you have and you haven't yet subscribed please do 
Uh, but yeah, we'll leave it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now. <laughs>